Hey guys, welcome to Fujira Family Adventures. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our channel. Please hit that notification bell so you can get our latest and greatest videos. And stay tuned, got some kokanee action coming up. Today we want to talk about using a fish finder for kokanee fishing. So what I'm doing is I'm just watching my fish finder. I'm actually watching my dodger and my jig drop all the way down. Once I know I'm in the zone, I will start jigging. So we've got down to 50 feet. We're going to jig. And we're going to pause. Just little jigs. We know the kokanee are in the area. We don't want to scare them away. So the kokanee that we were marking down to 50 feet, they're not quite active yet. They're not as aggressive as they should be today. We had one at 40. He was chasing the bait, but just no interest. So from here, we're going to potentially try different baits, different dodgers, different jigs. Start with your bait first. Work on the dodger if you'd like. A lot of people, they just use the same dodger all winter long. So if you've got interest and you know that the fish are following your bait or taking a look at you, try and try and convince them to come in and, and bite your hook. So try and reel up a bit. Try and get them to chase that. Reel up, pause a bit. I'm just going to reel up as I go here. I'm going to see if I can get some to come in. One at 30. He's just chased me up to 25. Oh, got him. Ooh, that's a big one. Fighting good. It's a good one. Oh, yeah. I'll take it. There you go. A nice kokanee here. I'm going to clean him off for you. So there you go guys, that's what we're using. Using a little pink jig. It's actually this one here has got a 90 degree angle on it. I'm using one of these spoons or one of these flashers, ice flashers. This worked really well. He chased it up from 30 feet. So just like I said, if you're not marking them, bring it up a bit, pause, and you'll get yourself a couple kokanee. They'll chase it. The aggressive ones will follow it up and they'll take your bait. We put our first kokanee on the ice, in this tent anyway. Tent next door, pretty sure he's got two or three. We are marking them at about 30 feet now. So I'm going to go right back down to 30 feet. Maybe we've got some aggressive kokanee down at 30. But we're still playing with our baits, playing with the jigs. I think primarily it's the, the baits right now, though. We're playing with different scents. So I'm going to go down to 40 feet. And I just had a fish come right on the finder right away, so he saw it dropping. And so I got a fish on me right now at 40 feet. Doesn't look like he's interested. He's kind of swam down some more. So I'm going to drop myself down a little bit more past him, see if I can entice him to bite. We got another fish coming up from 50. So just because you're not seeing fish on your fish finder doesn't mean that they're not at that depth. If you are marking fish at 50 feet, they will be there for a bit. I mean, they will change their depth their, their depth in the water column throughout the day. But if you're marking them at 50 feet, and then you mark one at 30, and you come up to 30, don't forget about those ones that are at 50 feet. Go back down, see if they'll come back into your cone of your fish finder. So i got another one up at 35, so I'm going to go back up to 35. And there's one right above him at, four, at 30. So... Watching my fish finder, I see my, my dodgers come up to 35. I'll jig there for a bit. If I get no interest, I'm going to come up to that one at 30. And then I'll go up to 25. So keep keep playing with them. Just always keep your, your rod tip moving. Make sure you're pausing it a little bit. Small jigs, especially in lakes with, with bigger predators. You don't want to spook these fish. So we'll come up to 25. There was one on me there at 32. I'm watching my fish finder to see if he's going to follow me up. And he did. He's following me up right now. We'll see if he'll bite. Oh, I had a tap. I had a tap at 25. Make sure that you're having a direct connection to your jig. I've heard of guys, some guys like to use braided line for kokanee fishing through the ice. 
they say that they get a better feel for the fish. I had a fish on me. I was jigging really slow, small jigs, and he was staying on me. I started jigging really quick, and he went away. Yep. So they're just, they're very, they're that finicky. You gotta be really careful with your jigs. But I think right now, I think the mealworm's not working all of a sudden, so I'm going to switch my bait. Okay, guys, so I changed my bait. I put a piece of corn on, and again, these fish just are turning away right away. There's two of us out here. I'm in my tent. And Kevin over there in the other tent. We need to make sure we're using different baits, different scents. Find out what these things want, so we're constantly changing our baits. If you've got a couple people with you, have each person try a different bait and see which one works and if that bait works everyone can switch to that bait and catch their limit. I got two of the smallest nibbles just now. Yeah, I just, had one too. just tiny these things guys these things are hitting so light right now they're just tapping it just just tapping that bait. You got to be ready if you're fishing for kokanee and you're trying to get a limit when the bite is really soft you really want to be paying attention to that end of your rod and just you want to have a connection to that jig. I'm watching them on the fish finder. I know they're there. I'm looking at the fish finder. I'm jigging. I got some at 30 and 40. So the one at 25 is not really interested. I'm going to go past the one at 30 down to 40. I can always come back up through them. And sometimes if you go right past the fish and then reel up, right past the fish and then reel up you can actually trigger a bite the fish are being really finicky today the kokanee are very aggressive they are chasing and checking out our stuff and then they're turning around and taking off so this is the prime time that you need to be trying different baits trying different methods but mainly baits because the jigging process we've already proved today that if you jig too quickly these things are just, they're spooky. They're just taken off. I've always got an extra setup ready just in case the bite turns on. You want to have an extra rod sitting to the side. You can grab that fish, put it down, and get that rod back in the water. Get your extra rod back in the water so you're fishing right away. You don't want to miss it. Right now, the kokanee, we're not marking very many. So right now, while we're not marking any, I'm going to reel in. And I'm going to change setups. And we'll be good to go. I actually have a couple rods here, so I've got a couple set up, so I can switch between Buzz Bomb and two actual kokanee jigging setups. Oh. Got him. Mm. About 35 feet. Yeah. Take it. Okay, finally, second kokanee here. William Spoon, pink jig, beautiful little kokanee, good eating. Well guys, it's 1.30 now. Caught my first kokanee somewhere around 9.30 this morning, 1.30 in the afternoon. Anyone that fishes with me knows that I'm extremely stubborn. I like to try everything that I've brought first. And now I've broke down and I tr I'm trying Kevin's corn. It's great. Caught my second kokanee on it four hours later after rolling through all of my bait. So today the color is orange corn and the scent is garlic. Lots of garlic, a couple cloves in there in your bait jar and you're good to go. Oh, got him. Right under the ice. Nice. Oh, oh, oh. Another nice one, right under the ice, using a smaller spoon, the same pink jig. I think the best ice fishing hack that you've given me is having a towel with you. <laughs> that has been the best idea ever. Oh, there's one. Got him. That's a nice one. I'll take that one any day. Yeah. Smaller, 
smaller presentation. Okay guys, got another one here. Switch to a Williams W50 flasher. Still got the same pink jig on. I'm using Kevin's orange corn today. It is helping me a lot. Got a really nice kokanee here. So for those of you that have made it this far in the video, just to recap, I tried all my corn. I tried mealworms. Nothing's working. I switched to a, an orange corn that Kevin's been using in the tent beside me. And it is working amazing. <laughs> There's another one. Right on. That's five. <laughs> awesome. Ten feet. What's that? How's the corn? It's working good now. <laughs> what a difference.